Uh, now we are at the reef. The reef, this is where the gold bearing ore is. So at this mine, they were looking for this rock with the black shiny pebbles. So if you can check this reef, it creates an angle. These miners will only follow the reef. So we'll extract this rock, then send it out to the surface where they're still going to crush it. Once it's into powder form, that's where the process of extracting gold starts. So the detailed information will be explained when we get to the gold core, where you're still going to see how they used to melt the gold. Then we can move to the next station. So here we have the map of this mine. You can come closer so that the rest of the group can see. So this mine is called 14 Shaft. It's part of the Crown Mine Group of Mines. They started mining in 1909. They've stopped in 1977. So during 70 years of its existence, they have managed to produce 1.4 million kilograms of gold. This mine is 3,293 meters deep. This was the deepest and the richest gold mine around the world. So we are here at level two. That's 75 meters. We cannot visit the rest of 55 levels further underground because they're all flooded. That's why it's nice and cool here. Yeah? So in the active mine, because they constantly pump out water to avoid flooding. So it gets hotter as they go deeper. So today's temperature is 15.6 degrees Celsius with a ventilation of 0 0.2 meters per second. So that's a natural ventilation there. So electricity was introduced in 1926. We have mercury fire here that converts alternating current to direct current. So direct current was preferred for running traction, pump motors and the lighting is underground. So this is where they introduced the overhead trolley. So overhead trolley can pull eight cocoa pans at a time. So this is where it got its name, Goodman. Goodman, because it was here to relieve the miners that were manhandling cocoa pans underground. So now we are approaching a low hanging on. Please mind your head. So these areas here are called up deep stopes. Stopes, this is where the gold was mined. So this is where they were following the reef. They will only extract the rock that has gold. They need to support the hanging walls to avoid rock falls like that. So they left those rock falls there just to show how a proper rock fall looks like. So they use these wooden supports. These are called the sprags. Sprags, they're from the blue gum tree or eucalyptus tree. So where it's not possible to use the sprags, they will then use the roof poles. So this is another form of support. The shortest roof bolt will be one meter long. So the water that you see in these areas, this is natural underground water. So that's why mines, they have to constantly pump out water to avoid flooding. So now here they show us how they used to develop and extend the tunnels till they get to the reef where the gold will be waiting. So firstly, mine geologists will discover in which direction the gold is. Then survey department will start drawing up the grid line, indicating to the miners where to make one meter deep holes for blasting. Since they didn't have electricity when they started mining, they used chisels and hammers, candles at the face to make one meter deep holes for blasting. You can imagine how long it took them manually. But since electricity was introduced, then the check hammers came into place. This can make one meter deep holes in less than 10 minutes. They are water injected to minimize the dust. Because the major rock handled underground is quietzite. So quietzite contains silica. So the dust, when you breathe it in every day, it rises into a lung disease, silicosis. So that's why water is important there. So once they are done with one meter deep holes, that's where the blasters are going to stuff the dynamite. Set the charges and leave. Once this area is blasted, 
The tunnels will be extended, but the ventilation system will then clear the fumes that will be created during the blasting, so that when the next shift starts, it will be safe for the miners. So now these miners are issued with the earplugs to protect their ears, because a lot of miners back then lost their hearing because of the noise. Then we can move to the next station. So you can come closer so the rest of the group can come in. So this side we have the cousin jet box or an all pass. As they are mining on the level on top, they'll create this wooden structure. As you can see, it's a very simple structure, but very effective. So they'll pour the rocks from the tip on top or slide all the way down. Once the cocoa pen is into place, they just lift up the cross plank. Once the cocoa pen is full, then it will be pushed to the station. Then when it gets to the station, they will still load the rocks into the skips that will pull the rocks out to the surface where they're still going to process and extract gold. So they need to count each and every cocoa pen that is being pushed out. They use the tally port there. So the tally is there for easy counting. So each time they push the cocoa pen, they will indicate with a stick. They introduce the tally because a lot of miners, they couldn't count. So out of this cocoa pen, this cocoa pen takes one ton of rocks out of one ton. They used to get four grams of gold. So no wonder oh. gold is so expensive, eh? <laughs> then we can move to the next station. So dynamites were most used explosives underground. So the box has to be locked at all times. Only specific qualified miners were allowed to handle the box. So this can hold up to 80 kgs of dynamite. The roof, it's picked like this. Since there was no electricity back then, it was just to avoid the miners putting the candle or covered lamps on top of this highly explosive box. So they were transported down in this wooden box. We have Alfred Nobel who perfected dynamite. So the first stops that I showed you earlier, had a huge rock falls in there. So in this one, we'll give you an idea where these miners will be going and they will only extract in the rock that has gold. So that will be like having two slices of gem sandwich and you are trying to extract the gem without destroying the slices of bread. So that's what happens in these areas. Then we can move to the next station. I from Bain. So on your right hand side, we have fuse box. This fuse were used to detonate the dynamite. So the box has to be far from the dynamite box for safety. Now here we have the water pump. This is air compressed Cameroon pump. So this water pump can pump 30,000 liters per hour. So these were used to, to pump out water to avoid flooding. So firstly, they will build the dam here on the ground, then channel this natural water into the dams so that they can easily pump out water. But the water in the dam will also be used at least five levels further underground. It will be supplying the check hammers and also it will be used to water down the floors. Then we can go to the next station.
Now here, Chip and Grizzly, it's the top part of the cousin jack box. So this is where the winch will be scraping the rocks into these areas, where they will have these miners that will be breaking the big rocks, making sure that they send it to the level below, where they will have the cousin jack box. So they can easily load the rocks into the cocoa pens. So these guys will be breaking the big rocks using the slash hammers or this mgala. Then these miners will be issued with the tickets. So their tickets will be date stamped by the clerk before they enter the cage. So can you please come to the side so the rest of the team can come in. So once they've got tickets, when they catch here on the ground, they'll have to start at the waiting areas. So those will be working at level two. This is their waiting area. So they have to all put the tickets inside the box so that when the shift ends, they need to come back and collect the tickets. So the team leader will then unlock the box and start randomly issuing back the tickets. So if there is any tickets left in the box, simply shows that somebody is still underground. So the blasters cannot start working if there is any tickets in the box. Because when the dynamites explode, they release a very dangerous toxic fumes. In concentration can kill a person. So it's very important to make sure that everybody leaves to the surface before they set the charges. So the posters emphasize safety. And we all know that working underground is very dangerous. But the language used on the top left poster, it's called Fanagalo. Fanagalo is a mixture of Zulu, English, and Africans. So it's the mind language that was created to make it easier for the miners to communicate. So it was compulsory for everyone to learn Fanagalo when you get employed in the mines. So it reads as follows. Zonkes Kati, Hamba Lapagalo Nven, Lapo so that simply means that always use the traveling ways in the villages. Then we can go to the next station. So they also had first aid stations underground. In case of anybody gets injured, then a qualified first aid administrator can assist the injured person. So it's very important for them to have their fully first aid equipment into place. So the rock walls have been painted in white to enhance cleanliness and to increase illumination. So please mind your head. So this side, we have the ventilation system. This ventilation system is that one that is used to clear the fumes that will be created during the plastic so that when the next shift starts, it will be safe for the miner. So behind there, we have the dam. So the dam there, we're only pumping out water from this level just to supply our water rides. Right. 